How does a buddy comedy movie differ from a romantic comedy? They probably are not having sex. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> But uh, in a buddy comedy, um, they're getting intimate. And it's about learning how to get intimate in a way that they haven't been intimate before. So, so the, you know, part, of, part of the comic trope is you get them as close to having sex as you can without making it kind of dis, you know, creepy or graphic. But what's one of the classic comic buddy comedies out there? Planes, trains, and automobiles. And what's one of the funniest sequences when they have to sleep together? Because it's about learning to, in a buddy comedy, they have to learn to drop defenses and, and become more intimate than they already have. If you start with a buddy, like in Wedding Crashers, they seem like they're great buddies, but it's so superficial because their goal is superficial to just work together to seduce women at weddings. But what happens after them is they both get into dilemmas. They both find women that they really like, uh, some of whom kind of confuse them. Um, and they both have to help themselves to resolve their problems. So, uh, so a good buddy movie is a movie in which uh, both characters need to change in some way. And, and somehow this pairing, um, either the pairing itself is the, is the inciting incident or something happens to them that changes their relationship and changes the way that they react to each other and they react to the world at large. The one thing I want to say about the difference between the hero's journey and the comic hero's journey, I think one of the important differences is in the hero's journey, the hero is greatness within and is eventually going to heal the world. In the comic hero's journey, the hero has to heal himself or herself. The world's fine or the world's not fine. The world is the way the world is. But the comic hero is not, is not integrated well into that world. And in whatever way the comic hero exhibits his or her personality, it's we in the audience can see that's not working for them. Bill Murray's a jerk and eventually he'll be alone. He'll be a jerk all by himself. Steve Carell in 40 Year Old Virgin, he's a nice guy, but he's gonna be alone too. Neither one of those are really gonna work. Kristen Wiig in Bridesmaids, oh my God. You know, I hope she can stop trying to uh, let John Hamm have his booty calls. So, so the world isn't changing. They have to change. And I think the lesson for us is that, yeah, we, we can try to change the world, but you know, changing ourselves uh, is both more immediate and, and, and more to the point. What's the structure of a buddy comedy, whether it's buddy cop, whether it's groomsmen, whether it's Swingers with John Favreau? Uh, I, think, I think the structure is, is still basically the same. You have the normal world. How do they normally get together? How, do they, how does this world work for them in, in the usual way? Then something happens to change it. Something, something happens to, to make the normal change. And then it goes through the rest. I think then it goes through the rest of the steps. I'm, I'm not sure I have a, a clever or insightful answer to that because I think it's, I mean, I could look at individual movies and talk about how their individual structures are different, but as a genre, um, buddy movies are, are uh, structured the same as other comedy movies with, with some impossible or improbable thing uh, happening that forces these characters to change. In the other guys, Will Farrell and Mark Wahlberg uh, are the other guys. They're, they're the, not the hero cops. They're not the cops who can do anything and could you know, solve every crime and beat every bad. They're the other guys. And when the hero cops are killed and they have to step up, 
That's the WTF. That's, is it impossible? No, it's improbable that these two guys, so different, have to work together to, you know, solve the crime, to, to, to you know, do what they need to do for the police force. So I think it's, I think it's structured fairly the same in terms of normal world, they're, they have they have their fall, their flaws, their faults, and everything's going to stay the same until the inciting incident, and then they have to transform. And as they transform, they begin to open up to each other, and they begin to learn new skills, and they begin to transform, so that uh, Will Farrell becomes more heroic. Uh, and Mark Wahlberg becomes um, uh, a little smarter about what he does. So they, they kind of learn from each other. That, that happens in a lot of buddy movies. The, the, the movie, the, the part of that movie that I love so much is where uh, Will Ferrell introduces Mark uh, to his wife, who's this gorgeous supermodel. And, and all Mark Wahlberg can say is, come on, you're kidding, right? Or, yeah, because he can't, he, he, can't, he can't understand it. So I thought that was very funny. What should a writer know before beginning a buddy comedy movie? I think he needs to know how these two characters complement each other and antagonize each other. I think that's, I mean, that, that's one thing they need to know is that is that you're putting two characters um, in a situation that they're both uncomfortable with, both maybe the situation itself or, or certainly each other. And so it can't just be antagonism. It's got to be a situation in which, as the narrative progresses, the, the one, char one character has to have something to offer to the other character. The other character has to have something to offer to the first character. It can't be one way. Um, in, in 48 hours, uh, you know, Nick Nolte is this can-do-it cop, but, you know, uh, Eddie Murphy has some, has some chops too, and, and he can add to what Nick Nolte can do because Eddie Murphy has has his his humor, his cleverness, his his improvisational skills, his ability to to kind of take advantage of any kind of situation, um, and Nick Nolte is this big bull of a guy. Uh, so they have to, you have to figure out what do they need to learn, and can they learn from each other? It's not just enough to have um, a tall guy and a short guy, a fat guy and a skinny guy. Uh, the buddy comedy has to explore what does it mean to be intimate with another person and to learn from another person. And if you take the female sort of flip side, like um, Two Broke Girls, they, even though that's a TV show, they, they, they were still able to, they didn't really seem to get under each other's skin as much. Right. They, they, they were in this together. Right, but they have to get in, uh, into each other's skin to a certain extent. I mean, the odd couple. They certainly get, you know, that was a play that had, that had, you know, a begin, you know, a WTF, and then it, it, they, they started to hate each other, there was a big fight, but then they learned that they needed each other because they're both divorced guys and they, you know, they need, they need the friendship. So, so it's, it's, it's about... I think the thing that you have to do is, is sometimes when you write a buddy comedy, you're saying, well, that's the dumb guy or that's the loser guy. And you condescend to that character. You write down to that character. And you have to remember, you know, what if, what if you're the loser guy? You know, so, so you have to realize that, that they both have something to offer each other. And then in the beginning, they don't know that. Yeah, and that's great too, even if this is not, this is more romantic comedy, but with uh, the Bridget Jones diary, Renee Zellweger's character is, is, is not a bad person, but she's always fumbling and, you know, pantyhose, dress in the pantyhose kind of a thing. And, and y you, it's hard to look down on her because she's still lovable. Right. I mean, they, they design it that way, but 
she's still someone that you want to embrace and you'd want to be friends. Right, but but it's not her fault that she in, that she goes to the party in a in a buddy suit. Somebody <laughs> somebody set her up. Sure. But but what's lovely about her is she tries to make the best of it.